It would be dangerous for you to get any closer, so could you please stand back? All right, then. This is it. Okay, Fiore. I'll bring up the symbological formula on this terminal, and you can do the actual imbuing. If you want to view the formula from a different angle, or have any questions at all, please let me know. Thanks. You know, I don't think I'll ever get over feeling nervous when I have to imbue someone else's stuff. Alright, let's get to it. So this is what imbuing looks like. And that was our final symbol. <sighs> Thank goodness. It's all over. Congratulations on a job well done, Fiore. Are you okay? I am tired, but I do want to see the results of all this. I suppose we should make our way to the bridge now. I've updated the software. Now our fate is squarely in the hands of Lady Luck. I thought you might like to know, Captain, that I've never done this without running months of tests first. If this ends in failure, I'll apologize to you all in heaven. I highly doubt that'll be necessary. I'll cut the power to the engine if I see any abnormalities. I see. Shut down regular warp engines. Yes, sir. Shutting down regular warp engines. First, we need to see if it can even start. Now, engage Gravitic Warp Engine. Aye, aye, sir. Engaging the Gravitic Warp Engine. What's going on? Come on. The Gravitic Engine's up and running. Warp 1. All systems normal, and gravitic wave values within predicted limits. First, try increasing the speed to warp 5. Warp 5. Yes, sir. Warp 2. 3. 4. At warp 5. There don't seem to be any problems yet. Now it's time for the real test. My calculations say we can safely accelerate to warp 15. Just do it carefully. You heard him. Accelerate to warp 15. Uh... Yes, sir. Six... Seven... Eight... Nine... We're now at warp 10, sir. Keep accelerating. Eleven... Twelve... Thirteen... Fourteen... Good so far. Careful. This is the moment of truth. 14.2. 14 14.4. 14.6. 14.8. Warp 15, sir. All systems appear to be normal. Did it turn out okay? Yes. At least, it would seem that way. What a feat! It is, isn't it? Yes, oh, we wow. totally did it. Ridiculous it's ridiculous. It's success, Captain. How magnificent to think that imbuing made this possible. Congratulations, Captain Kenny. The spacecraft is now officially the fastest in the Federation. We're the best. <sighs> Spectacular. Nice. We owe you a huge debt of gratitude, Doctor. No, Fiore is the one you should be thanking, not me. You're truly something special. What do you say to coming to work for me once this thing is over and done with? Thank you. I'll think about it. According to my readings, there should be no issue with maintaining this speed. We could theoretically go up to 16, but there's not enough data yet to back that claim up. Stay cruising at 15 until we have some more. This should be plenty fast anyway. Keep sending me flight data as you receive. Also, stay vigilant and remember, return to normal space the moment any aberrations occur. 
Will do. Thanks again for your help, Doctor. Troop, over and out. Maintain warp 15. We're going after that Chrono ship. Yes, sir. Now plotting our course. At this speed, it shouldn't take long to catch up with them. I doubt they'll take kindly to our presence either. In the event they engage us right after emerging from subspace, get some rest while you can. You're always handling a bunch of different machines, aren't you? It's part of my job. Could I maybe try that one out? Please? Pretty please? I'm sorry. As much as I would like to, the rules... Oh, I'm sorry, I didn't know. It's okay then, I won't pester you anymore. I'll be as great as you someday, Anne. Just you wait. Mr. Delacroix, you really need to build up your strength. Why are you trying to teach me swordsmanship? <sighs> Wouldn't this sort of thing work better with two students? Both of you are in the military, so you have a knack for it. Keep training, and you'll be fine swordsmen. I've got a knack for it? Weren't you just complaining about this a moment ago? I'll be as thorough as possible with you. Thorough, huh? This confirms my suspicions. How did you like Fakreed? Its environs are pristine and the scenery exquisite. I see. But I heard the nations of Fakreed are presently at war with each other. The seeds of conflict can be sown anywhere, it would seem. We must let them reap their own harvest, though, no matter how much we want to interfere. Yes, sir. I shall keep that in mind. Also, please make sure Captain Kenny doesn't interfere with any local females. <sighs> That's a great idea. I'll be sure to keep a close eye on him, sir. Can I ask what kind of work you usually do? I provide scientific and technical support, but I also do combat training during peacetime. I am in the military, after all. You must be the highest of the high ranking. I just have a special job, that's all. Captain Kenny's the truly elite one. What? You're telling me that old per- Um... Captain Kenny is an elite person in your country? He may not look it, but the captain comes from one of the most highly respected families around. You don't say. A respected family. So, First Officer, how's the hunt for a bride coming? Ugh. What about that cute officer you said you went out to eat with the other day? <laughs> no good, I take it. In that case, not to worry. I'll introduce you to another girl then. Uh, Captain? Yeah? Please give it a rest. Is something wrong? Well, the board you taught me how to use is no longer working. Were you looking for something? I was looking for training halls. Well, we have a training room. Can you be so kind as to show me the way? I don't want to break this again. I forgot to tell you, First Officer, but I've detected a ghost on this planet. Captain, I've been monitoring the planet on a regular basis. I know you're kidding. Mm-hmm. It's a female with rockin' knockers, and she's so beautiful, she'll make your eyes pop out of your head. Oh. I mean, don't bother telling me more. I couldn't care less. No need to lie. I could tell you were interested. No, I'm not. Please, just do your job. Rocking knockers, huh? What's with the long face now? I thoroughly failed at cleaning up. Well, it's not often you hear of people thoroughly failing at something like that. If it fails the first three times, try a hundred times. What exactly is that about? It's something my mentor used to say. He'd use it whenever an experiment of mine failed. What he meant was that two or three failures could still fall within the margin of error. And if you fail a hundred times, try a million times, right? I'll keep trying. <laughs> Good luck. After the current operation is finished, why not take a short rest? I'm good. Plus, I need to find some more ideas for my tall tales. And just please don't drag the rest of us into it, Captain. Oh, come on. You know you like it. Not in the slightest. Anomalies? Just one, sir. What? The cook accidentally dropped a bottle of alcohol. 
No booze with dinner? The spill corrupted a digital image of the cook's daughter. He then set to restoring the data and couldn't finish dinner. No dinner? This is terrible! I can't believe it! What should we do? Settle for a machine-cooked meal. Do you happen to know when Anne's birthday is? Yes, indeedy. Are you gonna get her something? I mean, she saved me when I got hit by those gleaming sticks. So, I would like to pay her back sometime, if I can. I see. Despite the aura she puts off, Anne likes cute things, right? That's why I was thinking of getting her a handkerchief embroidered with a cat. I bet she'll love it. You know, I saved you too, so... What'll you be getting me as a present? I'll think of something good, just wait. I can barely contain myself. We're technically on duty, sir, so I don't think you should be drinking. We're already breaking a treaty. By comparison, this is a drop in the bucket. You should still lay off the alcohol. You need to lighten up. Besides, this planet's drinks are top-notch. You know what they say, where there's humanity, there's alcohol. As you wish. Just don't forget your regularly scheduled transmission with Commander Dean in ten minutes. That's in ten minutes? Why didn't you tell me earlier? Uh-oh. You're late entirely too often, Captain. Please be more punctual. Seriously? You were 12 minutes, 2 seconds late for that rendezvous, 2 minutes, 33 seconds late another time, and 38 seconds late for breakfast today. Give me a break. 38 seconds doesn't count as late. If someone were to perform their duty 38 seconds late during an operation, what would you say then? You win. I'll be more careful. You were late again this morning. What? I arrived at almost the same time as Victor. Victor arrived one second early. You, on the other hand, were four seconds late. Four seconds is enough for you to get on my case? Imagine we're in battle. You give an order to change the ship's course and the crew tarries four seconds before acting. Do we survive? Fine, fine. Jeez, I'm sorry, my bad. Fakreed is a nice place, isn't it? It is. I get the sense that there's something there we forgot about long ago. Every time I go to an underdeveloped planet, I'm struck by how vastly different the cultures on it are from the last. What every planet does have in common, however, is that they are overflowing with energy from their native life forms. There is still so much we can learn from them. Agreed. I'm glad we were able to visit this planet. Uh, I don't know. Should I really go drinking today? Ah, oh, whatever. Let's do it. Be careful. You can't stop an experiment in motion. What's that supposed to mean? It's something my mentor used to say. It means you should think deeply before taking any action. Well, now that you mention it, it might be a good idea to go easy on my liver. <laughs> he'd often give me advice, but he'd often disappear without any warning as well. He might not be the best person to listen to. He sounds like a great man. I don't know. I don't know too many details, but apparently my ancestors were pretty impressive people. I kept hearing the same thing over and over from birth. Don't bring shame upon the great men who came before you. Be respectable like they were. Isn't that lame, though? It's my life. I'm not living it for some dead guys. I have my own goals I want to accomplish. My own dreams, even. The problem is, once you grow up, you start understanding people's true intentions. It's a pain. Once you know you're in a position to help others, social pressure forces you to, even if you don't need to. There's nothing great about living this way. That's the life of a timid and boring human being. I didn't want to live that way. But that's the way it turned out. To what extent was their civilization affected? Good news, sir. The number of weapons brought in was quite meager. Thus, their civil impact was not significant. We can erase all record of the event. People's memories, though, will remain. Such memories have the potential to affect the development of firearms there, but there's nothing we can do about that. The real problem is... The ecosystem, I assume. It's in terrible shape. What could have possibly caused this massive level of ecological pollution? Once the symboforms are gone, the ecosystem should begin reverting to its natural state. Continue observation to minimize the damage. Report any abnormal readings immediately. Yes, Captain. Leave it to me. I feel for you, Anne. I really do. It's gotta be tough looking after that man. Who? Oh, you mean Captain Kenny? 
He's fine when he gets down to business. He's not commanding anyone, though. He's an irresponsible lecher. I've learned to live with his foibles. Besides, everyone needs to blow off steam now and again. That's truly an impressive take on things. You're such an understanding person, Anne. That's because I respect Emerson. Although, please don't ever tell him that. Red alert, all hands to battle stations. Vacredians, come to the bridge immediately. I repeat, we're on red alert, all hands to battle stations. Sixteen minutes until contact. Set shields to Omni and phase cannons to automatic aiming. Whatever you do, don't let any shots hit their engine room. Aye, aye, sir. Setting shields to Omni, putting phase cannons on automatic aiming. Other enemy ships? Our short-range radar detects only the one. It doesn't seem to have rendezvoused with any fleet yet. There's also nothing resembling a base in the area, but there is an asteroid belt. Captain, the enemy has slowed down. Only minutes until contact. Reduce our speed as well, but I don't want to go any slower than double the enemies. Sir! They've warped out and are flying a holding pattern in normal space! Emergency warp out. Enter normal space. Aye, aye, sir. Currently at warp 10, 9, 8. High energy emission from enemy ship. Now 0 0.173 light years away. Hurry, they're gaining the upper hand as we speak. 2, 1, now in normal space. Engines to half. Evade via course 140. Divert power from gravitic warp engine to shields. Reducing engines to half. Setting course 140. Diverting power from gravitic warp engine to shields. Four incoming torpedoes currently 30,000 clicks out. It's possible to avoid two of them, but we're assured of taking hits from the remaining two. We'll weather this volley easily enough. Our state-of-the-art shields and output from the gravitic warp engine will keep us safe. All hands, prepare for impact! Shield efficiency reduced to 78%, but that figure is rapidly climbing. No problems here. Engines to three quarters. Launch four photon torpedoes on course 90 Mark 90 at 100,000 clicks. Yes, sir. 30 seconds to current destination. After that, set engines to full power and take the enemy from behind. Fire phase cannons once we have visual contact, but don't aim for their engines. Aye, aye. Aye, aye, sir. Destination reached. Firing four photon torpedoes. Enemy taking evasive action. Torpedoes 70,000 clicks out. Engines at full speed. Fire all phase cannons at the enemy's projected position. Firing phase cannons. The phase cannons all hit the enemy ship, but they seem to have had no effect. So, their shields aren't half bad either. Fire the last four photon torpedoes. Copy that. Firing. They managed to evade the first four torpedoes. The next four at 5,000 clicks. Three made contact with the enemy shields. And? Their shields are in perfect condition. Their speed remains constant. Damn it. It's our newest ship and we're barely treading water. They have quite the shields, don't they? Captain. Now that we can run the Gravitic Warp Engine for extended periods of time, it should be possible to use that energy to launch quantum torpedoes. This ship is equipped with 12 of them for testing purposes. You're right. That last attack should lead the enemy to underestimate our firepower. Hiding quantum torpedoes amidst a barrage of photon ones should also increase the likelihood they'll hit. That's my end for you. Load four photon and quantum torpedoes apiece. Don't forget to set it so they do not target the engine room. Aye, aye, sir. Preparing four photon and quantum torpedoes for launch. The enemy vessel's changing course. Their new course indicates they'll attack, not evade. They think they can take down our shields with a volley of plain old torpedoes. There's no doubt they underestimate us. Fire two photon torpedoes, then fire two quantum ones. Yes, sir. Firing two photon torpedoes. 
Now firing two quantum ones. Captain, sensors read the enemy has launched eight torpedoes of their own. Take evasive action. Yes, sir. Talk about a bold move. That proves it. They don't think anything of our artillery. Photon torpedoes, 5,000 clicks out. Quantum torpedoes, 8,000 clicks out. Enemy torpedoes incoming at 20,000 clicks. The enemy's making no attempt to evade. Photon torpedo contact imminent. Their shields sustained no damage. Still no sign of evasion from them. Quantum torpedo contact imminent. Captain, their shields have been reduced to 11%. We've also confirmed their engines are no longer operational. Yes. And their torpedoes? We succeeded in avoiding all eight of them. What a thrashing. Hold that thought. The enemy ship has lost power and is now caught in a nearby planetoid's gravitational field. What was that? Uh-oh. If that ship goes down, Little Miss Starlight goes down with it. Engines at half speed. Pulled it within ten clicks of the enemy. Ten clicks, sir? There's nothing their ship can do to us. It's lost all power and gone utterly silent. Understood. Engines to half speed. We're currently ten thousand clicks out, and gradually slowing down. And, once we get within ten clicks, halt its descent with our tractor beams. Will do. Currently one thousand. Five hundred. One hundred. Ten clicks away, sir. Secure the ship with tractor beams. Activating tractor beams. Their ship's trajectory has stabilized. I want to talk to their captain. Open a comm link for me. Yes, sir. Sir, there's no response from them. Is it that they can't respond? Or that they simply don't want to? We'll have to board them and settle this face to face. Prepare the transporter. And don't forget to investigate the ship's layout. Yes, sir. All right, everyone, to the transport room. Delacroix, what's the situation inside the ship? It's lost almost all its power, including the default generator. All that's left is a small reserve, which is connected to the life support system. Then let's hurry. Prep for transport. All right. Time to board the enemy's ship and get Little Miss Starlight back. Okay. Energizing. Relocate the test subject at once. Sir! This is why I told you. When you go to the research lab, put that one in the shuttle as well. So, one of the kiddos is apparently inside that room, while the other's in the research facility. I'm pretty sure our plan is to rescue them both, right? Then why don't we start with the one in front of us? It's as Miki says. We should help her. Brilia! Freeze! Don't you understand the position you're in? Think it over. You have a lot more to lose by doing that than us. 
Still, I'd rather blow her brains out than let the Federation get its paws on her. <laughs> Victory is mine! And so are your weapons. Hand them over. Don't take a single step forward. You know very well what'll happen if you do. Hmm? Over here! Way to go, Thank you for the for the most adept swordsman in all of Rasulia, indeed. You okay? Uh, yep, I'm okay. Whatever you do, don't even think of leaving my side. Okay. No, no, no! Our plan! Not a single one of you is getting out of here alive! Prepare yourself! Double slap! Shut up! So strong, try to withstand this! But we've known that for a long time. Fidel! Fidel! You okay? They didn't hurt you, did they? Nope. I'm okay. Really, uh, thank goodness. Mickey! We are all happy to see Relia safe and sound. However, we cannot stay here much longer. Relia. You want to come with us and help rescue Feria? Yep. I'll come with you. Kenny, to the Charles de Gaulle. This is the Charles de Gaulle. Transport the seven of us over there right away. I can't. There appears to be a shield encasing your ship that blocks transport functionality. Captain, they've set a silent countdown self-destruct sequence. They love their explosions. How much time left? 27 minutes, 19 seconds. It's still calculating, but we clearly don't have much time. Can we stop it? Not with this little time. The command's far too advanced to override. What about the jamming? Its security is the same level as the countdowns. What's more, it appears to be directly linked to the captain's vital signs. Delacroix, can you send a shuttle to the cargo bay over here? I can and I would, but the doors to your cargo bay are closed. We'll take care of that. Aye, aye. I'll have a shuttle waiting for you right outside the doors. Got it. Over and out. I take it there will be someone waiting for us at this cargo bay? Right. Us. Cargo bay. Now. Yeah. No one decided to lock the hatch. I'll get it open. we got 32 seconds remain that's too short captain to the charles de gaulle i read your present location lower your shields a sec then reset the boundary to nine clicks go all out with the new warp engine and head toward the enemy ship as rapidly as you can that's just rash five seconds remain i said do it the clock's ticking Secure? <laughs> All systems clear. The shuttle should be okay. So we're not in any danger? 
We did it, sir. Thank you. We're still alive. Thank goodness. Let's return to the Charles de Gaulle. I must have overslept. I wonder how really is doing. Fidel! What's wrong? What are you doing, Fidel? Taking a walk. Maybe I should come along too. I'll come too! Perfect. Then let's be on our way. Problems are just piling up. We can't let this escalate to all-out war. Kronos is sure to make an official demand for her return. You don't think erasing her symbols is viable anymore? Even if it is, it's unlikely to defuse the situation at this point. <sighs> It'd be so much easier if Little Miss Starlight had never been created. <gasps> Captain! Relia! That was uncalled for. I know. I'm sorry. Relia! Leave me alone. Everyone would be a lot happier if... If only I weren't around. That's not true at all. You know that. It's okay. I'm tired of this. Leave me alone. Fidel! I promised that I'd protect you. If you left me behind, I wouldn't be able to live with myself. If you're going to jump, Relia, then let me jump with you. No! You can't! You might never be able to rid yourself of that pain. It might influence how you live until the day you die, but right now, Relia, I want you to live for me. Without you, there's no chance I could ever be happy. Please don't do anything like this ever again, okay? If for some reason you ever stop believing in yourself, you can always believe in me instead. My fault. If anyone deserves the blame here, it's me. I apologize for my behavior. I never meant that I didn't want you to be created. It was a poor choice of words. We're very sorry that we brought this incident upon you. You won't do that again, right? Fidel, Miki, Fiore. Victor, Relia, you're all needed on the bridge. Do you happen to recall what that enemy captain said before we fought in front of Relia's holding cell? Something about a shuttle, right? Mm-hmm. He said, when you go to the research lab, put that one in the shuttle as well. Mm-hmm. Good memory. From that statement, we can obviously infer that Ferry is inside their research facility. A Kronos research facility, huh? We found two of their symbology labs in the course of our journey, though. Aha! Eureka! One of them got blown to bits and he's useless now. So... The only one left is Symbological Facility Prime on the banks of the ISOC. Okay. Everyone to the transport room. We're coming for you, Feria. Good. It moved. It's embarrassing to have to talk to the air to get things to work. Emerson, you can't look Anne in the eye, right? 
Uh, no, that's not true. Not at all. I know this one. Here, you'd say, Anne has you whipped. Whoa, who taught you that phrase? Was it Miki? It was Miki, wasn't it? Emerson, you're scary. Miki, you like it when someone does Gucci Gucci Goo on your feet, don't you? What? Not in a million years. It tickles. But even though your mouth says no, your heart means yes, right? Wait a sec. Who taught you that nonsense? It was Emerson, wasn't it? Who else could it be? He's gonna be missing teeth when I get through with him. Miki, you're scary. It's no good. They've updated their security software. This would be so much easier if they were idiots. Will it take much longer? No, it won't. Because this time we can use our ship's main computer. Decryption complete. We can now override the facility's transporter. Wow! Can you send us to the third basement floor? The one with the gigantic terminal? You know it. Three floors down, you say? That shouldn't be a problem. Energizing. to say this, but it looks as if this terminal doesn't contain any information on Faria. It makes sense they pull a stunt like this, considering the entrance's security system was reprogrammed as well. Well then, should we try to search for another terminal or something? There are definitely rooms we haven't checked yet, so if we search them all high and low, then... What a warm reception. <laughs> Go where all these enemies are coming from. Uh, That's just a thing, no They're concentrating their resources on the You. I'm Rafine, the curator of the biological specimen wing here. Please, follow me. I'll take you to the girl you seek. Wait, why would someone like you cooperate with us? Because I deemed you formidable. Formidable? Not a single one of the researchers in this division are working here of their own accord, including me. We've had enough. We simply can't involve those two any longer. The issue, however, is that releasing them solves nothing. They will continue to be sought out by one party or another. They must be protected from both Kronos and the Federation. Come this way, please. This could be a trap. Stay vigilant. These animals are all corrupted. So you are the ones who did this? Yes, as one aspect of our research. Why are there security drones here? They aren't authorized to patrol this section. It's time to fight fire with fire. Attack! Try to withstand this! Fight. 
Our destination's beyond the store. yourself. I'm okay. We're safe. And it's all thanks to you, Relia. <laughs> Look! General Alma! It's Faria! It's Faria! General Alma, Director. Is it safe to assume this is all going according to plan for you? <laughs> I must say, I did not expect you to turn traitor on us, Rafine. How unfortunate. Get back, ma'am. Your life is in danger. <sighs> I see you took Relia from us, as I knew you would. Otherwise, you'd hardly be worthy of the Kenny name. Why don't I take Faria as well? Such a loud bark for a small runt. I am Thoris, the one and only director of this fine laboratory. Thanks to your tireless efforts, I have collected some truly superlative data. It somehow escaped me that activating space-time symbology catalyzes the release of certain hormones. But you, Fidel was it, kindly brought it to my attention. All this was for space-time symbology? I brought it to your attention? What's that mean? In other words, they knew full well that we'd save Relia from that Kronos battleship. Not only that, they wanted us to do it. Then, during that last fight, they monitored Relia's biological responses closely. Thus, they effectively measured certain changes that occur when she employs symbology. Very keen of you to grasp the situation. 
You're saying you used a whole ship's crew as bait for us? And it has all worked out as I planned. We only possess two units at the moment. But once we are able to mass produce them, the information we collected from your endeavors with her will certainly be useful to our cause. Mass produce? You use this place to craft endless numbers of people? Do you even understand what life is? <laughs> of all the ludicrous. <laughs> May we all meet again in the near future. And over Feria! If we're gonna go after General Alma, we'll need our ship. Let's hurry. Mom! Dad! What was that? Really, uh, thank heavens you're alive and well. It's a pleasure to meet you. I'm Kristoff, one of the researchers here. Are you really his dad? Well, her father figure. Now that you've shown yourself, I take it we can expect some answers vis-a-vis -vis this place? Our symbometric technology far eclipses that of the Federation's. As part of that, the research we conducted here was on the ultimate script. Symbols that can physically manipulate the fabric of space and time. Space-time symbols. As I'm sure you are well aware, the Pangalactic Federation appeared before Kronos 16 years ago by the Space Date Calendar. In order to combat their overwhelming military might, we embarked upon large-scale research to test the feasibility of using space-time symbols to turn life forms into weapons. Then, in Space Date 526, we were coerced by the Federation into approving the CFNZ. Coerced? I don't think so. In order to preserve the peace between our organizations, we had to establish mutually agreed upon terms before approving it. As a universal power, you can rationalize it that way. As the weaker party, though, we had no choice but to submit to those terms. We manufactured countless test subjects, but only succeeded at applying symbols to two of them, Relia and Feria. Those poor things. The military hawks quickly latched their talons onto exploiting these space-time symboforms. They set up facilities here on Fakrid and forced us to modify the local fauna. The next step was to release those symboforms into the wild. Up until that point, we had conducted our research clandestinely. Then, we received an order from them to pit our subjects against the natives for the sake of gathering data. They told us all this was imperative in order to defend ourselves against the Federation. So, in other words, you're saying everything that transpired here is the Federation's fault? Only that it was the impetus. We simply wanted to conduct our research in peace. Don't make me laugh. Treating a planet's population like lab rats is hardly peaceful. I know. It was difficult for us, too. We couldn't expose Relia to this travesty any longer, so we helped her escape aboard a shuttle. So, the metal thing that fell on the Dakov footpath was your shuttle? It was, indeed. Sadly, Thoris was apprised of our plan and had the thing shot down once it launched. Now, in order to unleash Feria's full potential, they plan on using the data they collected from the trials you've overcome with Relia. It seems that the Federation's appearance here has put General Alma on edge. I apologize for the impertinence of this request, but please, free Relia and Feria from their fate as instruments of war. With this card, you should be able to enter an edifice known on this planet as the Cygnus Silica. Cygnus Silica? Once you trek its hallowed halls and reach the shrine within its deepest recesses, you will understand why we chose this planet as our laboratory. Do you have any idea where General Alma might have gone? I see. Well, I appreciate the other info. Let's move out. Relia. Really, uh... It's time to say goodbye, Relia. Huh? 
I'm afraid we can't go with you, honey. Why not? I get it. Now that the Federation knows of this facility, it won't be long before it's destroyed. There is nothing more we can do on our end. Take good care of Relia and Faria for us. Mom. Dad. Farewell, my dear Relia. Relia! And, prepare us for transport. Aye, aye, Captain. <laughs> <laughs>